we've decided on a monthly basis to do a little video on our website so that we can update the members about what AGC is doing and how every day we're providing value for you. So today I'd like to talk a little bit about um, our government relations activities. And when you look at our government relations activities, we define that broadly. Do that. Uh, frankly, if we don't do it, it's likely not to get done. Uh, we feel that in order for us to be effective, not only on Capitol Hill, but within the various federal agencies, we have to do a number of things. First of all, we have to build and maintain relationships. Secondly, we have to provide credible information. And a lot of times that credible information is based upon data that we collect that helps make our case. And finally, we have to be credible. Uh, people in the various administrative agencies have to know that when we tell them something, it's fact. It's the truth. It's not hyperbole. About two years ago, the Department of Transportation decided uh, that they wanted to reform the disadvantaged business enterprise rules. Um, I think we all can agree that providing equal opportunity for everyone to engage in the construction industry in, the trans in tra transportation uh, is a laudable goal. When these new uh, proposed revisions came out, we had a problem with, with a number of issues in the, in the proposed rule. But in particular, there was one that challenged us. And that was in, with regards to requiring federal contractors, when they submitted a bid, to list all DBE subcontractors that would work on the project, the scope of the work, their price, along with a letter uh, from the DBE that agreed to the scope of the work and the price. Um, this, as any highway contractor or any transportation contractor knows, uh, this was quite burdensome. Uh, we submitted extensive comments. Uh, we had a number of our chapters submit comments, and we had over 100 members submit comments, all making the case that this was a burdensome requirement, that uh, DOT listened to us. And in fact, they changed the proposed rule, and in the final rule, uh, there is a seven-day grace period. And we've repeated this type of activity and this type of success over and over again. And in fact, uh, if you take a look at the regulatory agenda that we face in labor, procurement, safety, and the environment, we're dealing with probably about 25 different regulations and proposed regulations and revisions. And we're employing the same type of strategies in all of them. Uh, right now, we are about a month away from an election. And as I remind my colleagues on the national staff all the time, Elections have consequences. We want to make sure that the six million employees in the construction industry nationwide have an understanding of what the issues are that impact the construction industry and why it's important for them to understand those issues and to vote for people that will advance our interests. So I would invite all of you to take a look at constructionvotes.org. Well, It'll give you a number of tools to tell you about how you can uh, talk to your employees about construction industry issues and how uh, different candidates support our issues and whether they're worthy of their consideration in, in their vote. Well, we have six million employees in this industry uh, and we'd like to, for them, for their voice to be heard so that we can create a more favorable political terrain and advance industry issues. And I'm going to come back next month, uh, the, a day or two after the election. We'll see how our construction votes program worked. We'll see what, what the Senate and the House look like. And maybe we'll take a look at uh, how some of our issues uh, may advance in a, in a Congress that may have uh, experienced some significant changes. Until then, I appreciate uh, you uh, spending some time with me today. I also, as always, appreciate the support we get from our members uh, to build a better industry. Thank you.